Welcome to the ultimate low-end flagship phone battle of the year. Today we have the Samsung Galaxy S23, Samsung's second chance at redemption from the horribly flawed S22 from last year, up against the Google Pixel 7. Google's refined version of the industry-changing Pixel 6 from last year. And coming in at just $599, the Pixel 7 is $200 cheaper than the $799 price tag of the S23. But the question is, can it match up? You see, if you watched my Mr. Who's the Boss style S22 versus Pixel 6 comparison from last year, it was a no-brainer to go for the Pixel 6 because of the flawed battery life and the overheating of the S22. This year, the S23 is very different and shockingly good, so today I'm going to be putting these two phones head to head in a series of categories to see which one is worth your money. And also, a big thanks to UPDF for sponsoring this video. Starting off with hardware and the S23, honestly not much has changed from the S22. The only thing you'll really notice is how Samsung took design cues from the Galaxy S22 Ultra by only having the lens protrude instead of the whole camera block, which I think makes the phone look more minimal and clean. They're also now using the new and improved Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which claims to be able to survive a drop on hard concrete or asphalt. But otherwise, this phone almost feels like the beloved size of the 6.1 inch iPhone as they're the exact same spies, but much more comfortable as it is one of the lightest phones I've ever used at 168 grams, which is a whole 38 grams lighter than my iPhone 14 Pro. Not to mention, I think this phone looks absolutely stunning with the lavender color I have here with its metallic purple aluminum rails and symmetrical camera lenses with matching purple rings. It just feels and looks so good that I really don't even want it to put in a case, but I still will. Now, onto the Pixel 7. It still roughly keeps the same design philosophy as the Pixel 6, but I think this new design actually looks much better. The camera bar sort of blends into the rails with cutouts for the cameras on the back, which makes it look more elegant and mature in a way, instead of having exposed glass and plastic that was visible on the Pixel 6. Also, the regular Pixel 7 is actually smaller than last year's Pixel 6 at 6.3 inches instead of 6.4, which actually goes a long way to make this phone feel less clunky, in addition to shedding 10 grams, which is a bigger difference than you think. Regardless of that though, the S23 is just much more compact and a whopping 29 grams lighter than the Pixel 7 and combined with the more premium hardware of the S23, it easily takes the win on hardware, although the Pixel 7 is still fantastic. Flipping over the phone to the displays, this is important because it's something we actually interact with. On the S23, you get a gorgeous 1080p, 120Hz display with perfectly symmetrical slim bezels. There's only a very tiny hole punch selfie camera on the top, which maximizes the screen size on this phone, unlike the big dynamic island on the iPhone 14 Pro, although it does have its uses too. Anyways, the screen is sharp, vibrant, and punchy. There's no color casting when you tilt the display. And improved this year is the brightness, which goes up to an insane 1750 nits, meaning that you'll have absolutely no trouble seeing the screen in harsh sunlight. I've also noticed that the auto brightness was working really well on this phone, and I didn't just have to keep adjusting the brightness manually, which was honestly great. And also, the 120Hz refresh rate paired with the new animations on One UI 5 make this phone feel smoother than ever. On the Pixel 7, they also made one major change that has honestly made a huge difference and fixed one of my biggest complaints about the Pixel 6, the brightness. Rather than 500 nits of brightness manually and around 800 nits in auto mode, the Pixel 7 can now go up to 1000 nits. This makes a huge difference when using the phone outside and you don't have to try and find shade to see your screen anymore, although it is still no match for the S23. There's also the standard 90Hz refresh rate instead of 120Hz, which makes the experience still feel buttery smooth, especially with the awesome Pixel UI animations. The display also does look pretty decent, with vibrant and rich colors that are awesome for content consumption. Despite that though, it's pretty obvious that the Samsung trumps the Pixel 7 in everything about the displays, especially as the best phone screen manufacturer in the world. Now, before we move on to the last bits of hardware, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, UPDF. UPDF is an amazing PDF editor that has a ton of useful features to make your life better. Once you open up the software and any PDF file you like, 
You can do all your standard PDF tasks like annotating the PDF to highlight and underline important sections of your document. You can also add new text boxes with callouts, sticky notes to write yourself a note, and even fun stickers and stamps. What's super cool though is the fact that you can directly edit the PDF text without opening up the original document while still retaining the same format and font which is honestly game changing. And if you want to be super fancy, you can also add hidden links into your PDF so when someone clicks on a word, they can be brought to whichever website you choose. And as for security, you can sign documents by making a signature that's always saved in the program program, add your own watermark so no one can plagiarize you, and even encrypt the file so no one can open it without a password. And lastly, some features that I personally love are being able to organize and change the order of their pages in the document, being able to combine multiple documents into a single PDF, and of course, being able to compress the size of your PDF for stupid websites that can only take like 1 megabit files. It's honestly such an amazing PDF editor with all your tools in one app, and best of all, there's even a free version that you can use, and if you love it, you can use my link in the description below to save some money on a one-time purchase. Thank you, UPDF again, and back to you, Fenson. Alright, let's talk about the rest of the hardware. Starting off with the content consumption experience, the speakers. The S23 has a pair of dual speakers with Dolby Atmos enabled, which gives a great wide soundstage and can actually get surprisingly loud for the size of the phone. The Pixel 7 also has a pair of stereo speakers, and it does allow the phone to get really loud and sound clear without distortion at higher volumes. However, honestly speaking, as someone who is pretty serious about audio, the S23 completely blows away the Pixel 7. They both get pretty much equally loud, but the Pixel 7 just sounds muffled and also tinny, less balance of different frequencies, and also quite lacking in bass. The same can be said about using the USB-C port with a dongle for headphones as well. Samsung is using a really great USB-C port here, and I don't find myself maxing out the volume even with my planar magnetic headphones. The Pixel unfortunately just does not have enough power in the port, and also loses a lot of detail with headphones regardless of which dongle I use. And lastly, for biometric unlock options, Google finally, finally added face unlock to the Pixel 7, which is super convenient and works really well just like the S23. Where the S23 does shine though is the use of the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor. It's definitely much better than the more common optical sensors, being much quicker, more secure, and it even works if your fingers are dirty or wet with just a tap. The fingerprint sensor on the Pixel 7 is still much improved this year though, compared to the horribly inaccurate one on the Pixel 6, although it was later fixed by an update. I just find it less accurate and a little slower than the one on the S23, but yeah, basically the S23 does better than the Pixel 7 in pretty much everything hardware. Alright, so far the S23 has been dominating the Pixel 7, but it's still too early to call it as there's still time for a comeback. Let's continue with performance and software because the phone experience is heavily dependent on this category. Starting with the S23, Samsung surprised us all this year by announcing that the entire Samsung Galaxy S23 lineup will be using the latest Qualcomm chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 worldwide due to an exclusive partnership. This means that outside of North America, the Samsung Exynos chips will no longer be used, leading to the same performance and battery life for every person worldwide. And as a bonus, Samsung is using a custom branded Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 version, overclocked with higher clock speeds, and honestly, I've not noticed a single slowdown while using this phone, and I doubt I'm even coming close to using its full potential. Samsung is also using a new improved cooling system with vapor chamber cooling on the S23 now instead of the old thermal paste and graphite. Last year with the S22, I actually did complain that the phone was overheating pretty easily, which is honestly quite uncomfortable to use, and I'm just really happy to say that I haven't experienced that a single time with this phone. Even while installing updates when I first set up this phone, filming videos all day long with this phone, and even while gaming, which is honestly such a welcome improvement. And as for the software, it's pretty much what you expect from Samsung. One UI 5 has been absolutely amazing in the way that there has been absolutely zero bugs that I've faced, unlike my horrible iPhone 14 Pro that the more I use, the more angry I get. There's honestly not much to say about it other than it being the most bug-free experience you'll find on Android right now, and it honestly just works with the addition of a ton of features and customizability, although I personally don't use any of them. And now for the Pixel 7. Last year when the Pixel 6 first launched, there were just so many bugs that plagued the entire launch, but with Android 13 on this phone, everything has been fixed and the software runs super smoothly and stable. 
all of the upgraded Tensor chip in this phone doesn't really show much of an improvement in benchmarks. I think I can confidently say that I feel like the performance is just a little snappier than my Pixel 6, although it could definitely be placebo as well. As usual, apps open up very fast, animations across the UI are very fluid, and I haven't noticed much stuttering or lagging, if at all. Apps also stay open in the background most of the time, which means that you won't have to constantly reload your app when switching between them. And also finally, one thing that did bother a lot of people, including me, was the overheating issue on the Pixel 6, but I can gladly say that it happens a lot less often, but it still will overheat a little bit if you push this phone really hard and use it extensively, so it's not an issue for me anymore. And as for the software itself, I confidently believe Pixel UI on Android 13 is the best software on Android without a doubt. There are actually a ton of useful features such as voice dictation, which is my favorite feature and it's actually super duper cool. With this special voice dictation feature, Google is able to make transcriptions incredibly fast and accurate and all offline. It could even fix grammar mistakes, do auto punctuation, and even send by voice. But the best part is that it's integrated in the recorder app as well, so if you ever need to sleep in class or remember thoughts that you'll for sure forget later in the day, just hit record and you'll end up with a transcript that you can search through later too. But it's not just for the audio outside the phone. This also works for the audio inside your phone too. They have this live caption feature that will generate captions for any speech that's playing on your phone, like Instagram reels that usually don't have captions, or supposedly even phone calls. There's even an option to translate it to a few languages. And speaking of translation, there's actually an interpreter mode, which I'm sure most of you have seen their ads on this already. It's actually super handy and amazing to see how much Google has improved the accuracy. And if you can't already tell, the Pixel software wins this category with its super useful features, but I will say Samsung has really closed the gap with its super reliable and bug-free software. I'm not gonna give anyone a point for performance because I believe software is what matters and honestly, I can't tell a difference between both phones with my type of usage. The S23 does technically have more performance though, which may be important if you do a ton of mobile gaming, unlike me. Another big area of comparison are the cameras and same as last year, the Pixel 7 blows away the S23 in the photo department in my honest opinion, although it's very subjective and also depending on your taste. Now, funny enough, I don't think both of these phones have changed at all compared to its previous predecessors. There were zero upgrades for all three sensors on the S23 and S23 Plus, with the only change we saw this year being the improved 12 megapixel selfie camera. The Pixel 7 also actually uses the exact same set of rear cameras too, with both the main and ultrawide having zero hardware differences. The selfie camera was also upgraded to an 11 megapixel sensor compared to the old 8 megapixel one for face unlock just like the S23. And for that reason, I'm not going to do a full on in depth photo comparison because it's going to make this video like half an hour and you can just check out the one I made last year with the S22 and Pixel 6 over here. Everything I said in that comparison still applies to these phones today. But basically, both of these phones have fantastic HDR processing and the biggest difference lies in the fact that the pictures from the S23 feels a little soft, especially when compared to something like the Pixel 7, which is honestly quite disappointing. The 50 megapixel high res mode does work some of the time to enhance the details of the image, but it often changes the processing in a weird way which may be off-putting and it still does not match up to the point and shoot mode of the Pixel 7. So if you're serious about photography, I would say go with the Pixel 7 unless you really need the telephoto sensor from the S23. And finally, the video quality which I'm just going to take a snippet from my S23 vlog for you guys to judge for yourself. All right, as we all know, iPhone is known to have the best video footage out of all the cameras, so uh, we'll use this as the control. This is the video quality from the Pixel 7, which I think is only okay. And also, I'm using the rear cameras for all these uh, video comparisons I'm showing, by the way. And finally, this is the footage from the S23 at 4K30, and a Samsung is generally known to have the best video on the Android side of things. Also, one new feature on the new S23 series is now the ability to shoot up to 8K 30 frames per second instead of the old 24 frames per second. These phones are also supposed to have newer mics, so uh, let me know how they sound below. And finally, the front-facing sensors, which is super important if you're interested in any sort of vlogging. And uh, first up, this is the iPhone 14 Pro. 
Next up, this is the selfie camera of the Pixel 7. And I think one of the weaker points of the Pixel is actually the selfie camera. So uh, I don't expect this to look too good, but uh, who knows? I don't know. And last but not least, this is the selfie footage coming from the S23, which does house the new 12 megapixel selfie sensor. So uh, hopefully we do see some nice improvements over here. Let me know what you guys think down below, but I personally think both the S23 and Pixel 7 look great with great HDR and stabilization. Although, I still think the video quality is overall better on the S23. The mic quality is also something that's improved the S23, and it sounds fantastic, while the Pixel 7 just sounds okay. If you're serious about video though, I definitely recommend going with the S23 because it's just the best video on Android. And finally, the most important category of this comparison, battery life because this is where the S22 fumbled the bag real bad last year. The power hungry Snapdragon chip, Samsung's poor battery optimization, mixed in with the tiny 3700mAh battery on the S22 meant that the phone just could not last through the day, especially while I use data. I'm not even much of a heavy user as I usually just, you know, text and check social media, yet I only just got over three, sometimes four hours of screen on time if I was lucky. This year, Samsung bumped up the battery capacity to 3900 milliamp hours and with the efficiency improvements of the new processor, the battery life has been incredible to me these past few months. I've been easily getting six to seven hours of screen on time with a mix of both 5G data and Wi-Fi, which easily lasts me through an entire day. I don't even usually use up the full battery and end up like 30% left at the end of the day as I don't use my phone too much. And with really light usage, it can actually last me two entire days with almost five hours of screen on time, which is unheard of for a phone of this size. There's also a light performance profile mode that prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. And my testing, I've been getting over eight hours of screen on time, which is absolutely nuts. And surprisingly on the Pixel 7, despite the brighter screen and smaller battery size, of 4355 milliamp hours compared to 4600 on the Pixel 6, I'm actually getting better battery life on the Pixel 7 as well. Like the battery life on the Pixel 6 was still good and I could get four to five hours consistently, but with all of Google's sorcery and Android 13, the Pixel 7 gets me over six hours while being on data for the majority of the day and even while hotspotting to my other devices. But damn, I would have never imagined that I would ever say this, but the S23 with its 3700 milliamp hour battery and its 120 hertz screen has better battery life than the Pixel 7 with its 4300 milliamp hour battery and the less battery eating 90 hertz screen. It actually lasts a lot longer for me in day-to-day -day usage, and I'm just completely shocked at the S23. And to end this comparison off, the price, which is going to be the biggest factor in your purchase decision. At $200 cheaper, the Pixel 7 offers, in my opinion, the best bang for your buck in terms of the overall experience with great hardware, the best photography camera, and the best software experience on Android. With the S23 though, now that the battery is all fixed, you're actually gaining a lot of upgrades with the hardware itself, which I actually think justifies the price difference for $200. And for me personally, the S23 is going to be my Android phone of choice moving forward, just because though the compact size is just so comfortable to use, the battery life is better, and the video quality is really good, which as a content creator is important to have in case I need to use my phone as backup. That being said, the Pixel 7 still offers a compelling case and would be the phone I would get if I wanted the best software and photography experience, not to mention the best bang for the buck it offers. It's truly unbeatable for the value, and I think most people would be better off buying the Pixel 7, even though the S23 is clearly the better phone in many ways, such as hardware. And that's basically it for the video. Feel free to drop any questions you have about both phones down below in the comments, and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you stayed till the end and enjoyed this video, please smash the like and subscribe button, and also check out my other awesome content. But anyways, have a good one guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.